4G network. Uh, Sprint is building their 4G network on a WiMAX platform. Uh, which is essentially an extended version of Wi-Fi. It's got a range of about 12 miles, and it's got about four times the bandwidth of a normal Wi-Fi connection. So it enables some very high data transfer rates. Um, there's also this development in Japan called MIMO, which is a multiple in and multiple out, um, that has the ability to download uh, a DVD's worth of information to a moving vehicle at 60 miles an hour in about five seconds, which is an immense amount of information. Talking about very high transfer rates. The kinds of things that are going to give you real time virtual reality while you drive. Okay? So, <laughs> why did you say? <laughs> Thought you'd never ask. Bear with me for a little bit. There's some other cool stuff. I mean, if you're into if you're in a library business, you're certainly um, you're certainly up to here in understanding what RFID means for asset management and tracking. Um, and if you're, into, if you're into physical systems like uh, electrical or plumbing, um, you're probably starting to understand what mesh networks are all about. I'll have a little bit more about that in a minute. Um, and that's what Zigbee is all about. I have some slides that will share that with you. Um, but what I think is really important here is that we are seeing an incredible growth uh, in this wireless environment. And we have a change about to tip again to what I call this era of personal broadband. Okay, which is where we are all connected all the time. And this is not connected all the time, by the way. This is connected whenever there's information that needs to flow. Okay, what I'm referring to is something beyond that. So you remember this guy? <laughs> yep, remember Big Pen? You thought that was dirt, didn't you? No, well, that's, not, that's not dirt. That's his personal area network. <laughs> Okay? And it is the perfect visual to carry with you as you begin to think about the people you interact with and the fact that the device that they're wearing has got some kind of local area, literally personal area network around them. So imagine the kinds of social interaction we're going to have, and this is not very far away by the way, this is you know, maybe 18 months from now. Um, imagine now when you go into the bar. You know, you might have your personal area network turned up on full social engagement. <laughs> Hi, my name is Mark. I'm single. I love wine. I love, you know, blah, blah, blah. I do, by the way, and I am. Um, <laughs> but I love single and I am wine. <laughs> it's easy. Um, you know, or, or, or you may, I think about this instead, you may walk into the room and I am Dr. Mark Valenti and this is the room in which I'm going to be teaching and my personal area network is going to interact with all of the room systems and it's going to configure the room to my preferences and to the needs of the course that I'm about to teach. Okay, that's the real deal. Okay, that is really where it's happening and, and there are examples of this I'm going to share with you about how this is already starting to manifest itself. So, uh, this is going to look pretty geeky in the near future. Okay, and most of you are going to say, ah, not me. You know, but I can, I can remember when I said to myself, nah, that's not me. Right? You probably did too, but now can you live without this little double? Absolutely not. For me, it's my digital memory bank, um, among other things. Uh, but this whole idea of wearing your computer instead of carrying your computer is a very seductive one. You know, we have a young generation that's tattooed and pierced. They're going to think nothing at all of accepting some kind of chip that's constantly transmitting. Uh, and I'm going to share with you some applications here that are going to blow your mind. So, um, you know, it might be that the first thing we do is we attach some kind of heads-up display to our iPod or to our uh, iPhone so that we can watch movies. Okay? Um, but I think it's probably a little more powerful than that. And it's probably going to drive us to some applications like this. Um, here's an instance where you can take your smartphone into a room in, on a building, in a building on your campus, and you take that phone because it's fixed with GPS and a camera, and it's got a little piece of software, an app. Remember that term? An app. And it's got an app that talks back to your building information model, and by pointing your smartphone at the wall, it's going to tell you what's in the wall. Okay? I'm not making this up. Clover Point was exhibiting here this week. Did you run into them? 
Did you get a chance to talk to them or were they just so buried you didn't notice it? Okay? So this stuff is not over the horizon. This is doable now. There's some other things you can do with this. You can put building information on it. So now when you've got an incoming cohort of freshmen, they know what building is what. They know, in fact, they probably even could tell you who's in the building if the people in the building are turning on their personal area network. What a great way to find your friends. I'm in the student union, our favorite table, I got pizza waiting. Let's turn that around again and say, well, there's a revenue stream opportunity here. <laughs> you know, I can take this same kind of software and I can start to sell advertising to vendors that are already on my campus so that our customers, students, can locate where those services are. You know, those icons might just as easily say, as you look at the city skyline, it might say my town, Carnegie Mellon University, and the University of Pittsburgh, and Point Park. Okay. It's also possible that we might take this same kind of stuff and do a historical tour of our campus. So for future reference, we may have the architectural planning team um, who's walking around campus trying to get a handle on where the building goes and how it masses. And what we're looking at is what the historical context is. Okay, this is really, really cool stuff. Guess what? All of this you can do now. Okay, this is not even looking out over the horizon. This is stuff you can do now. Here's an interesting little graph. Um, most of us own a computer, maybe even two or three. In a couple of years, you're not going to. Okay, in a couple of years, it's going to go away from big clunky things like ThinkPads and iBooks. Uh, and it's going to go increasingly smaller, faster, brighter, sharper. Okay? Uh, in fact, um, I didn't bring a slide for this, but here's a little aside. How many of you have a camera in your phone? Yep, look around. Just have your hand up for a minute. Look around. Everybody. Okay? Would you buy a phone without a camera? You can't. <laughs> right? The phone guy, the phone guy, looks at you and goes, huh? Why would you do that? So here's what's coming next, ladies and gentlemen. Your, your next phone, or the, certainly the phone after that, is going to have a micro projector in it. Mm -hmm. So all those wonderful high resolution pictures that your camera takes, you can share with your friends. And on your campus, all those flat screens that we're installing, creating collaborative work areas and small group study spaces and digital signage and <laughs> In a couple of years, there's going to be an immense demand for white walls. Okay, you heard to hear from the AV guy. White walls, because everybody is going to own a camera and a projector in their phone. Okay, 